Welcome to the third and final part of playing Pong with uh, Deep Reinforcement Learning. In the last video, we completed the rest of the components necessary to start training for our model. And where I last left you, you were training for 1 million steps. So obviously retraining this model would take a little while. Um, so what I just did in between the last video and this one is went and copied a pre-trained um, checkpoint file into our directory. And what I'd like to talk about now is how to actually test and work with one of these models. So one of the most straightforward ways to test our model is to actually run the test function which I will show you in just a moment. So the first thing we're going to do is scroll up. And if you recall, we added this little um, if train equals true block to make sure we only uh, ran the fit if train equals true. So we're going to come up here and we're going to say train equals false. We just want to run and test the model. And let's go ahead and run this as is. And what we're looking for right now is just a note that uh, we were able to load the weights. So right off the bat, no checkpoint file to load under DQN uh, checkpoint 5. So our weights load here um, actually failed. And we did not successfully load our checkpoint file name. So let's just make sure that the one I copied over is uh, the exact same name. So dqn underscore checkpoint. So checkpoint.hf5. There's probably something different about the, uh, the name here. So dqn underscore checkpoint.hf5. So we should not need to put in the index uh, information there that should just you know quote unquote just work ah and here is my problem the file I copied over is h5f and I had hf5 so we're going to fix that you will also need to, well, actually, you won't need to make that uh, edit in your code because you will probably not be copying over a new model. So I'm going to go ahead and run that again and just make sure that it does um, what we're expecting it to. And this time around, we got a layer weight shape 226464, not compatible with provided 336464. So this can be a problem um, when we are, you know, running uh, models that we've copied over from another another project. So you want the models and the um, the one that you're copying from and the one you're copying to to be fairly identical. So I'm guessing somewhere in here, I did not quite get that right. So we're going to work through that really quickly. Um, so this all looks good. This looks good. This looks not good. So this should have been a three and a three. Make sure to make that edit on your side. And we're just gonna make sure again that it does what we expected. And we have loaded DQN checkpoint. So let's talk about how to test this model. So the standard way to test a model would be to declare a new ENV. So we're going to say ENV equals gym dot make. Uh, we're going to do the same ALE slash pong dash V5 that we did before, not V4, V5. And, but this time I'm going to pass in render mode equals human. 
So it should display something for us, um, you know, on the screen this time around. And then I'm going to say dqn.test env number of episodes will be one and visualize equals true. And then when we're done here, we're going to say env.close just to close it out. So this is our standard way to see inside of the framework here whether or not our model has learned. And you can see that it has. But something that I ran into, um, and it took me a little while to figure this out, was how to use the model if it wasn't in this um, you know, DQN test framework. That wasn't 100% clear from you know, looking around at documentation and some of the other information out there. So obviously I can run this test line but if you really wanted to have your Pong playing agent get out there and play some Pong, you don't want to be using the DQN test. Like that's not that's a great way to evaluate your model. Um, it's got a lot of cool built-in features, but that's not actually uh, you're not going to be able to program the other side of a game that way. So I'm going to comment this out, and we're going to walk through how to actually use your model in a, what I'll uh, air quote here as, you know, real world scenario. So I'm going to say observation, and this may be the first time you're, you're using um, Jim for, for real. Um, observation equals, and that's going to be like the image that Python Jim gives us back. So equals env.reset. So we've always got to reset our env to kick it off. And then we're just going to call it uh, for some arbitrary number of steps. So we're just going to say four step in range 300, because why not? So And then a lot of the stuff that DQN test is doing for you behind the scenes involves processing observations. So I'm going to say observation equals processor. That's the processor we defined earlier dot process observation and again keep in mind observation is um, a, a numpy array actually you know what before we even run any of this I'm just going to comment it out and print this off and show you what I mean by observation being a numpy array or it might technically be a tensor flow tensor either way let me show you what I mean so you notice this is a series of numbers that represent an image. So it opened up a, a Pong screen like you've seen, and what it's returning are values that correspond to that image. So that's what observation is. That's what it's getting from env.reset. So let's uncomment this again. So the first thing we're doing is process observation which coming back up here to our processor, we wrote a lot of this code earlier, but you didn't really get to see it in, in action. So this is passing this image array in. Um, it's squaring it out to 80, uh, 84 by 84 pixels, and it's turning it to black and white. So you notice how these are, um, it, basically it would take this array and it's gonna crunch it down a little bit. So let's come back down here. And we're going to do observation equals processor dot process state batch and observation. So again, just like what we did before. Um, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and make this range one for a minute. And we'll go ahead and print observation again to show you what's in there now. So remember earlier we um, divided by 255. So this is, it has turned that large value, because keep, keep in mind, the less data the network has to train on, um, the simpler the observation, the faster it's going to be. So we just went from something that was many, many lines long to something that is, um, you know, a very small block of, or a smaller block of information, uh, because it's 80, 84 by 84, 
and is only values between 0 and 1. It's, it's more normalized data. So, and again, at this point we've already trained. What we're doing is we're putting the data in the, um, in the state that the network trained on. So this is all stuff, these steps are all things that happened magically behind the scenes. Up here, when you passed in DQ and agent and processor equals processor. So now we're just using those things by hand. So action equals dqn dot forward and observation. So forward is the actual function that's going to return a target state action from the network. So you calling forward is you handing it your current state and then it should return what it thinks you should do. So if we grab the value of action here at this phase, I'm just gonna go ahead and print action. So it returned an action of four, um, which if you recall from our uh, you know state earlier, options are zero through five, and each one of those corresponds to you know up, down, fireball, something like that. So it thought based on our initial state that action should be four. Um, so let's go ahead then and take that step. So observation, reward, done info. And these are just standard things that the uh, Python gym, the OpenAI gym environment gives you when you run a step equals env.step and action. So this is us actually taking the step. Go, go do the thing. Um, I like to get some degree of output. So I'm going to print, oops, we're gonna do f for f string, action, action, reward, reward, just so we get some output from our environment. And we're gonna say if done, env.reset to reset the environment and env.close. And that is it. Uh, oh, we'll need to come back up here and set our range back to something that it can actually play. I'm going to go ahead and run this. So the game has started. You'll notice we have no reward. Oh, and it's bombing out. It's failing. So let's talk about why. And you'll notice it always comes back with the same action. So something in this, uh, something in this setup is clearly missing. And what it is, is that we passed it a forward, but we didn't give it the feedback of what's happening in the environment. So what we actually need to do down here is say dqn dot backward. And we're going to pass in our reward and then terminal equals done. So done would be, you know, done or not done effectively. Um, so we're saying here's your reward and here's whether you are complete or not. Now let's try running our code again. So you notice it still took the same action at the beginning, no matter what it took um, an up action and that still did not quite do what we wanted it to. So let's see what else I'm missing. DQN backward, reward. Ah, okay, I see one other small thing that we did not do. So we took our env.step and this again comes back to um, we have to interact with the environment in the same way that the you know dqn fit and the dqn train methods did so what we're going to do is we're going to say observation word we actually have to process the observation equals processor dot process step and you'll notice that process step was not something we defined up here um, we defined custom versions of process observation, process state batch, and process reward. 
but process step is actually something it's getting from this base processor class that we imported. Um, so in this scenario, we just have to use it. So we're also going to pass in observation, reward, done, info. And let me just scroll through and make sure that we are doing everything correctly. So yep, we're passing in. So we're taking our observation, we're processing it. We are passing in, uh, passing it into forward and taking the step. And then we are processing that observation. And now we will see if our network is going to react. And it is not. It is still outputting the same action. So let's step through and see what we are missing. And the answer may be that we don't have to pass it through process batch. It may be smart enough to handle that by itself. And voila. So I think the lesson from the last few minutes of troubleshooting is that, you know, once you've trained a network, it's going to expect the same inputs and outputs and information that it was trained with in order to be functional. Um, you know, your AIs, and, and they're getting better, especially large, you know, some of the large language models we're seeing. I'm sure we've all seen chat GPT. But when you're just getting started with these things, when you're building out these models, um, they're relatively narrow. They're capable of functioning you know, with the data that you have trained them on, uh, in the format that you've trained them on, um, etc. So you're going to want to make sure as you're as you're building these things out that you know one you understand, especially when you have these abstraction layers. Uh, this was a challenge for me, so I I just recently started playing with uh, you know this particular um, deep Q network agent. And it was a challenge for me to figure out how to go from, um, you know, being able to call the test function to being able to use this thing in a scenario where I was, you know, playing with an environment where I was interacting with it. So it's always worth understanding when you're using an abstraction layer like that how the abstraction layer. Uh, abstraction layers working with the environment, how it's actually, you know, doing these things. So, but with that, I think uh, we have a successfully trained AI uh, capable of playing Pong, maybe not capable of playing it at a, at a master level, but uh, it at least works well enough. Um, if you liked this video and you'd like to see more content like this, please like, subscribe, uh, leave a positive comment and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time.